Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket, never let it fade away. This is incredible. I left this running overnight, and when I got up at 6am, there was nothing on the screen. But then I came back at 7, and it was full of call signs. What am I talking about? It's Meteor Scatter on 6 metres, using the MSK144 mode. I still don't know much about it, but if you're set up to do digital modes like Whisper or Slow Scan Television and you can receive 6 metres SSB, then you can at least receive and see what the action is all about. Here in Australia, we set our gear to 50.230 MHz upper sideband. Elsewhere, other frequencies seem to be used, with 50.260 being the default on the program. The program I'm using is WSJTX by K1JT. You can download it for free. The program does various digital modes like FT8, JT65, Whisper and MSK144, which up to now I'd never used. But look at the results on the screen. This is from 6.22am and there's a long list of call signs until 6.50am, so around 30 minutes of activity. Most of them are from VK3HY, who's fairly local to me, but if you scroll down, you can see that there's a contact between VK3HY and VK4CZ. And you can see just here, I'm actually receiving VK4CZ at this split moment at minus 1, then minus 2, and then 0. So quite reasonable signal strengths for a weak signal digital mode. And apart from VK4CZ, you can see the contact here. It looks like that several attempts are made but it looks like they eventually had the contact. And there, out of the blue, was VK4NE calling CQ, which is a distance of around 1,400 kilometres. And you can also see VK4UH being called by VK3HY. This is all I'm using as an antenna. Yep, an HF G5RV not even optimised for 6 metres. For Australian viewers, there's an article on all this in the latest issue of Amateur Radio Magazine. As well as 50.230 MHz, there's also 144.230 MHz. And as far as when to listen, early Saturday and Sunday mornings, around 2000 UTC, which at the moment is 6am. When daylight saving comes in, it will be 7am local here in Eastern Australia. And there's also a Facebook page if you're interested in all this. You might think there's nothing going on 6 metres, Activity is low and propagation is poor. But you never know what is happening. Just leave your gear on the MSK144 frequency used near you, particularly around an activity time, and you'd be surprised what pops up on your screen. How about 2 metres? 144.230 here in Australia. Well I actually had a contact with VK3HY. A bit of an accident and definitely not meteor scatter as VK3HY is only a local. More interesting is to see if we can decode replies from more distant stations. 
In this case, VK4NE has come back to VK3HY. But so far, VK3HY is the only station I'm receiving. You can see that VK3HY is sending multiple reports to VK4NE. And because they're repeated, must mean that VK4NE isn't getting them. They'll keep trying until there is reception of one of them. Then they'll move on to the next part of the contact. That will be an acknowledgement that it's been received. And then finally, 73. So it's a very bare bones contact. No free text, very similar to FT8. Just scrolling down, a lot of attempts by VK3HY to get the signal report through to VK4NE. But eventually, as you can see by the three R's, communication was established. It just shows how fragile 2 meters meteor scatter is compared with 6 meters, where contacts were a lot shorter and far fewer attempts were needed. If we look at pskreporter.info and select MSK144, there's only one station showing on 2 meters in the last hour. But on 6 meters, there's a lot more. Based on my experiences receiving, where I got distant stations on 6 meters rather than 2 meters, 6 would appear to be the most active an effective band for Meteor Scatter Communication and MSK144. There's quite a bit of information about Meteor Scatter put on the web for beginners. This article by NTOZ is from the ARRL website. There are certain times of the year where there are meteor showers. And as for bands, it's a lot easier on 10 and 6 metres than 2 metres. The openings also tend to be longer on 10 and 6 metres compared with 2. On 10 metres, the ionisation trail continues long enough to have brief contacts on SSB. Never let it fade away